Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to take a look at the Ferguson 3T04 stereo radio cassette recorder from the 1980s. A lovely piece of kit, relatively well specced, solid, rugged and reliable. Quite a popular unit in fact back in its day. And I guess that's in no small parts the fact that ultimately it's a JVC RC717 in disguise. It's got the same layout and same spec pretty much and also has the VU meters and the radio panel there just like the JVC. Although the RC717 does have extra embellishments such as the movable condenser mics on the sides and also has the little snap-in lugs as well to attach a shoulder strap. But ultimately, certainly from the outside, it looks the same. So I thought what we do today is bring this one back up to date. It's been on the shelf for a while. It's dirty. It's not running well. And it's got a snapped aerial and a few things like that. So I thought today what we'll do is just give you a quick whistle stop tour of the inside. We'll put some fresh belts on there. Replace the aerial. I notice it's also missing a tuner knob as well. I think I've got one from a donor unit also it needs a battery cover so I think I've got one of those it is also missing the selector switch from the top which I don't think I have as a spare so I'll see what I can find I'm sure we'll be able to fashion something up together on that so anyway let's have a look inside and see what we need to do to get it up and running again and as usual first thing we've got her up on the towel of destiny and we'll get the back cover off And we've just disconnected two antenna cables that go onto the board just here and we'll get the power supply away as well positive and negative and that's the back unit away well on initial inspection it looks fairly clean in here i must admit there are some areas that look a little bit corroded on the board or at least it looks like we could do with probably cleaning up and freshening up some of those contacts there on those solder joints but what does stand out is there's somewhat of a mess going on here ah yeah okay so it's something to do with the motor supply by the looks of it but it looks like it's all been been bodged with electrical tape and what have you so we'll try and tidy that up anyway let's get all this away so there's a chassis earth just there to come away and we'll just start and picking these Then we'll remove the mounting screws. Then we can lose the speakers, which I've just color coded for reference later when we put them back on. And the multi plug to the radio board. So here's the amp board with the cassette mech removed. Basically what I've just had to do is unscrew one of the condenser mics and then the one that's trapped under the radio board I've just desoldered from the main board here. That allows us to get everything out. Still attached by the VU meters and stuff on the casing there but at least it allows us to get this part out. With regard to the mech then, the counter belt obviously is easy enough to get to so that one to be fair was still working okay. If I release the brake there and turn that, you'll see that it's still working all right. But we'll replace it nonetheless, and that's just going to be as easy, he says, as popping that out through there. So there's your counter belt anyway. So we'll replace that in a bit. I'll get the cassette mech away from the board shortly, but whilst I'm top side here, I'm just going to go in, give everything a, a clean, give it a bit of a zhuzh, re-grease any parts that need doing, just clean up these... Uh, these wheels, the idlers, and clean the heads, the capstan, the pinch roller, and then we'll crack it open, do the other side. It wouldn't be right without the gratuitous gunk shop, would it? And then we'll do the heads. The 
capstan's pretty clean too. Squeaky clean in fact. And also we just do the pinch roller while we're here as well. I've seen a lot worse but it's no harm in giving this a clean while we can get to it properly. I'm also just going to drop a little bit of alcohol in these controls as well. Got your two volumes and your tone and obviously your function switches there as well. And a bit of lube. So we need to get to the other side of the tape mech now to replace the main drive belt and clean the play record switches and stuff like that. So we'll just get these screws away. All right, it's open now and you can blatantly see just how wibbly wobbly that uh, belt is. That's definitely seen better days and it's obviously on its last legs. However, what I have noticed and obviously someone's been in here before it is a little bit butchered and we've seen the state of this cable just here as well. It needs to be sorted, but they've obviously forgotten to put the retaining screw back in here as well for the thrust plate. As it happens, it's not the end of the world because it's quite a thick piece of bent steel and it is marginal on tolerance. It could do with could do with letting in a little bit, to be honest with you. But they've just completely put this left the screw out, not put it back in. So I've now got to go and find one to try and put that back in. But anyway, here's the uh, here's the old belt for what it's worth. Oh, I can feel it's quite it's quite dry, to be honest. Obviously, has seen better days. I should be able to peel that out from under there. There we go. And there we go, you can see it's quite elliptical. Looks like it's probably about a 1.2 millimeter cross section. It's quite a chunky square belt that. And it's about a, I don't know, three inch something. So I'll go and measure that up properly. But to be honest, I need to go and, uh, I need to go and find a screw for this plate as well. So all good fun. Right, I've just placed the new belt on there. And that seems to be doing the job just nicely. Happy days. Now with regard to that little screw and the washer there, I tried looking at a couple of other old units, didn't have anything the right size and tried an assortment of small machine screws from the workshop as well. In the end, I've had to just go and rob the uh, parts that I need off of my donor unit, which is a shame because that particular deck is also in really nice condition. So what I've done is I've basically stolen them for now. There's a little spring there and the tiny screw that I need there. So I'll use them for today just to get this one up and running and then I'll try and find the right size ones just to replace the ones that I've pinched off the other unit. So I'm just going to get these in now, tension that down and then we'll clean the screws, uh, clean the switches I should say on the board just there and then we'll be able to put it back together again. There we go and I've just dialed that in against the spring now to give us just the right amount of clearance on that and I'll lock that in with a little bit of nail polish and let that dry and we're pretty much good to go. And we'll just clean and lube the switches while we're here as well. You'll find the record and play bar switch as it were can be uh, quite sticky to start with often hasn't been used in many many years and that's what makes the difference between it sort of squealing and howling and recording properly or not so it's worth giving it a good clean wash you can get to it and don't forget to lube it a bit as well all good so I'm just going to reverse everything that I've just done be mindful that you need to line the selector switch up with the correct part on the uh, on the main board there obviously to make sure it actuates afterwards but other than that i'm just going to reverse what i've done get it back together and i'll catch you shortly righty oh it's all back together belts are in everything's 
screwed back in condenser mics are screwed back in and soldered on headphone board is back in speaker cables are attached everything's cable tied back where it's supposed to go multi plugs back on the radio board yeah all good i think so all that remains now is just to get this backing cover on now one of them as i said before the original one that had a snapped aerial so rather than swapping aerials and stuff and messing about my donor unit has a perfectly good back case all solid all working so i'm just going to drop that one on because the aerial is already attached so i'm just going to get that back onto there and then i think we'll be in business okay so i've just buttoned it up and was giving it a quick power up test before i bolted it all up properly and it was running intermittently the tape was cutting in and out and then just wouldn't play at all checked all the leaf switches and what have you and everything was working okay and then I went back to revisit the um, the mess that the previous guy had made. It was all covered up in electrical tape and what have you. And basically kind of put a resistor, an old coil there in line with the existing, the original resistor. And it, I could kind of get it by wiggling various things. I could kind of get it to work to a degree and it cut out again and it come and go. Turns out there's a bad connection on the original resistor just there. So that's all just come out i've just taken it all out and replaced it with an identical unit from my donor board so i've just soldered that in place got rid of all the other junk that was there soldered that up and i'll just cover that up safely and securely now with some heat shrink i'll get that shrunk down and hopefully that will cure the issue there we go much better repair it's actually fixed now and it's solid safe and much neater too Rightio, so we're about to give it a decent clean and what have you. It all works really well. There's a few little issues along the way today, which I'll tell you about in the outro piece, but I just want to tidy this up for now. This chrome work has worn away a fair bit and it lets the whole thing down a bit, to be honest. So I'm just going to use some chrome detailing tape there. And I find this is perfect for cutting to size and just replacing over the original chrome paintwork. I've never really found anything that works quite so well in terms of giving you like a decent mirror finish and, and I find that pens and stuff like that can look a bit rubbish and kind of get everywhere so let's give this a whirl with a little bit of chrome tape hopefully it'll just give it an extra lift well there we go it's not perfect but it's a lot better now a lot more presentable right I'm going to go on and clean the rest of this unit for a minute and then finally all we've got to try and do is fashion something up to activate that switch on the top and we'll be there all right it's had a fairly deep clean hasn't been polished up yet but now is the time to put the donor tuning dial on and also i'm going to drop the donor battery cover on as well like so so all that remains then is for us to fashion up some sort of lever for the top give it a polish that'll be that okay so here we are then at the switch the selector switch the three-way switch and there's like a, an offset hole in there and it needs something to go in there to basically kind of just actuate it one way or the other i've got a piece of nylon here which i'm thinking about using cutting that down to shape i bought this to actually make things like basic switches and things from so i might just go ahead and see if i can fashion that into a something useful i've also got some other various bits of plastic here as well Nothing too fancy here, I just want a very simple lever arm that's going to go in there and lock in and, and go to shape. So hopefully we'll come up with something. Okay, well this might not be pretty, but it's going to do the job I think. I've just fashioned this out of a piece of nylon block that I had, that I bought for making kind of spare switches and stuff like that. Haven't got any lathes or other kind of tools to hand, so I kind of just fashioned this with a hacksaw and a dremel. And just kind of got it to fit pretty good it doesn't look like much at the moment you can always paint it and dress it a bit later but the idea is it goes in there we go and actually at the moment it even works the switch without being glued in so there we go it's a good fit which is the main thing it's just it's a little bit squiffy but i think we can live with it right okie dokie uh, let's just get this fixed in properly give it a deep polish and i'll see you in a second and so here it is then, the Ferguson 3T04, all sorted and ready for a new owner with a new lease of life. There were quite a few jobs to do on this in the end. 
It was supposed to be just a quick show and tell really, but quite a few little things cropped up, some of which I kept on camera, some of which I've just kind of got away and done on my own time. So I've written a little list here, and in no particular order, it's got a new aerial. The original one had broken, if you remember, and rather than just swapping that out, I had a really clean back case on a replacement unit. So I've just swapped out the entire back case with a new transformer and everything as well. So that's all done. I've also polished the aerial now to bring that up to a nice gleaming shine. It had a noisy wave band switch on it as well. So going between the different uh, wave bands of the radio was really clunky and noisy. So I've given that a clean and lubricate. That's sorted that out. It's had a deck service, so it's had a good clean, it's all been apart, had the idlers cleaned, the heads cleaned, the capstan, the pinch roller, the pulleys have all been cleaned, it's had new belts, both for the counter and indeed for the main drive belt, so that's all done. Also, someone had originally been in there and butchered the wiring and tried to get around an issue with the tape speed or something, I guess, because they put a resistor in there in series with the original one trying to sort it all out but it turned out that there was actually a fracture in the original resistor so I've taken all the old bodged wiring out and just put a new replacement unit in from a donor board so that's sorted also during recording I noticed in original checks that there was no playback but it was very sparse playback and even then only on one channel so I've cleaned all the switches the record play bar inside lubricated and cleaned all the controls and everything on the board reflowed a bunch of joints in there as well and that's all working perfectly on record now as well and playback also there wasn't a tuner dial on this i've pinched that off a donor unit ditto for the battery cover so that's now complete and we didn't have a switch tip and weirdly enough even my donor unit didn't have a switch tip on it either so i fabricated a new one using fairly Heath Robinson techniques admittedly but I've got to say it looks fine and it certainly works and does the parts so that's fantastic and also I replaced the chrome around the VU meters with some reflective tape just to brighten it up and give it a bit of a fresher look and then giving the whole thing a bit of a deep clean and a polish so there she is then quite a bit of work really for what it's worth but um, always nice to keep these things going so let's just give a quick listen to the tape now then just to see exactly if it does work or not. And I'll give you a few seconds of Nick Kershaw. And you can see that now rewinding and fast forwarding just down there and play marvellous not sure if there's anything on the other side because we're at the end of the tape there we go hopefully the uh, content match won't grab us on that but you can see all the VU meters are working volume on both channels is working beautifully no crackle no pop no snap if you're into that kind of serial also the tone's working well all the switches are working nicely so super happy with it now like i say quite a lot of jobs to do really for what it was worth but at least it's all sorted now so i hope you enjoyed watching that i hope you found it interesting and indeed useful please check out some of my other videos stay safe i'll be back soon in the meantime look after yourselves and bye bye for now